Hello everyone, welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Eddie's song offers Olivia hope, Robert consoles Anna, and Cyrus makes a pledge to Drew. Anna awakens in the Metro Court and discovers that Valentin is nowhere to be found. She tries to pry open his briefcase, but it's locked, so she picks the lock with a wire from a floral arrangement on the table. Inside, she discovers an envelope from Pikeman, which she opens. She hears Valentin approaching and replaces his bag, but forgets to replace the Pikeman envelope. Valentin tells Anna that he was at ELQ dealing with the servers and the water leak. Valentin notices the envelope lying on the table. When his phone calls, he pretends it's ELQ and sends it to voicemail. Valentin inquires as to what he can do for her. Anna claims he can assist her in determining who is attempting to destroy her life. Valentin would like nothing more than to smoke them out, which he considers a horrible choice of words, but they must exercise caution because this individual is a professional. He says he'll look into it, but there might not be any quick answers. Anna claims she needs to take a shower before meeting with her lawyers to deal with her insurance company. Valentine snatches the envelope as she rushes to the bathroom and receives texts from Sunneeth saying he has to see him right away. When Anna gets out of the shower, she discovers that Valentine, the envelope, and his briefcase have vanished. She discovers a message he left that reads, Had to run, dinner later just us. Robert and Diane meet in a judge's chamber, but the judge is late. Robert inquires about the auto exhibition, and she responds that it was spectacular. He asks which automobile was her favorite, but she has no idea and just talks about the colors, chrome, and leather seats. She said she had a great time. Robert inquires as to whether Alexis enjoyed it. Diane claims that Alexis was unable to go, so she accompanied Chris Simmons, who thoroughly enjoyed himself. Diane pulls back her laughter, knowing she's made him nervous, and he's not sure if Chris is male or female. Later, Robert learns of Anna's residence, which he was unaware of. He claims to be on his way. Diane inquires whether there is a fire that has to be extinguished. He claims it's already out and has taken a life. He briefs her and says he has to leave, so notify the judge that they need to reschedule. Olivia comes from a run to find Eddie in the quarter main kitchen, eating her cold leftover lasagna. She offers to heat it up for him, but he declines, saying he's used to eating like this while on the road. She refuses to let him destroy her dinner, so he eventually lets her warm it up. Eddie tells Olivia how nice Leo is and asks him to teach him how to play the banjo, but he doesn't know how. She serves him warmed-up lasagna and asks if he wants extra parmesan, but he declines because he despises it. Olivia observes that Ned has always enjoyed it. She inquires about last night's party atmosphere. He explains that he was assisting Tracy get over a hangover before working on a song. Elvis, he stated, was an inspiration to him. He waxes lyrical about how important music is to him and how it defines him. He offers to let her hear what he's written, and she says she'd appreciate it. Olivia receives a call from Monica as Eddie excuses himself to retrieve his instrument. They converse, and Monica just wanted to check in on Tracy and her relationship with Ned. You mean Eddie, she explains. Monica asks whether she's okay, and she claims she's okay as Eddie returns with his instrument. Olivia tells Eddie that she is worried about Monica because she is taking so many business trips to the hospital and attempting to save the day for everyone. Eddie says it sounds like her because she is preoccupied with Job and this family. She says they're worthwhile and inquires about the music. Eddie cautions Olivia that this is a work in progress, but she maintains she isn't passing judgment. He sings about being lost in the in-between, as if on a ship in a storm, and hearing a siren whispering to him like a distant recollection, someone he hears but cannot see. Olivia is moved and inquires about the siren. He's not sure, and he's not sure how to complete this song. Olivia believes he will finish it when the time is perfect and will continue to work on it, since it is wonderful. She bursts out crying. 
Joss tells Carly she's going to the pool to get a jump start on school reading for the new semester. Grey's Anatomy, the book, not the show. Joss departs, and Carly receives a phone call from Drew. She is relieved to hear he is no longer in solitary confinement and is relieved he was released sooner than planned. Drew wonders how Carly knew how long it was supposed to be and what she did about it. She admits that it was Sonny's fault. She inquires as to what transpired and why he was placed in solitary confinement. He admits to assisting an inmate named Cyrus Renault. She begs him to keep Cyrus away from her. Drew is informed by a guard that his time is up, so he requests that Carly come see him today. Drew runs into Cyrus in the common room in Pentonville. We meet again, Cyrus exclaims. Drew is told by Cyrus that he will never forget what he'd done for him and that he owes him his life. Drew claims he owes him nothing, but Cyrus swears on his Bible that he'll find a way to pay him back. Meanwhile, Diane arrives at Carly's house, and Carly inquires as to how awful things are. Diane wonders why she thinks it's terrible news. Because you are a lawyer? Carly responds. Carly observes that Diane rarely visits unless there is a crisis. Diane believes she shouldn't bother her with this, and Carly quips that she'll bill her for it. Diane discusses her issues with Robert, and she is terrified of being rejected by him as she pursues it. Carly claims that men and women are both complicated, but if Robert can't see how wonderful she is, then to heck with him. Diane acknowledges that was not the answer she sought. Betty appears outside Sonny's and talks on the phone with Mason. She is irritated that she has to keep this job after she has given him the products and claims it will cost him. Sonny invites Betty in by opening the door. He informs his security that he does not wish to be bothered. Betty inquires as to if Avery is ready to depart. He tells her flatly that she is not going anywhere near Avery. Betty, alarmed, inquires, What's the matter? He claims that Avery is sick and that he does not want her to catch it. She apologizes and says he can text her if he needs her again. He compensates her for her trouble with money. Sonny emerges from the other room after Betty has left, telling Dex that he knows what to do. Later, he contacts Ava to inform her that Avery is with him today, that he has set the trap for Betty, and that all they have to do now is wait. Later, Valentin comes, and Sonny is curious about the message he had Anna give to him. Valentin reveals that he was informed that there would be managerial changes at Pikeman, and they are upset with his lack of collaboration. Sonny claims he informed them he wouldn't assist until the warehouse shooting was resolved. Valentin seems to know more than he's saying, so he asks whether he works for Pikeman. Valentin insists he does not. Sonny believes he should cancel the transaction, but Valentin cautions him that he cannot. He emphasizes to Sonny that Pikeman has infiltrated numerous institutions and nations, and that he is on the lookout for him. Sonny explains that unless Valentin knows something he should be aware of, he can take care of himself. Valentin says no again, and Sonny dismisses him. Outside, Valentin calls someone and tells them that rushing things was a mistake, and they'll pay for it now. Joss watches Betty take a seat at the Metro Court pool and order a large brunch and some Bloody Marys. Joss inquires if she has already been dismissed. Betty announces that her sister is ill. Dex bursts in and pulls Joss into a kiss. Betty texts Mason saying the child is unwell and that she is taking the day off. Meanwhile, Joss claims that now that Dex has arrived, he can assist her in studying muscles for her anatomy lesson. When Betty receives a call, Dex motions for Joss to exchange seats, claiming he wants the sun, but she notices he's concentrating on Betty. Betty eventually leaves, and Joss inquires of Dex as to what is going on. Dex tells her to trust him and he'll call her. He chases after Betty. Betty eventually ends up at a nail shop, and Dex reports back to Sonny. Sonny advises he should forget about her and follow someone else. Robert arrives at the Metro Court to see Anna. She tells Robert that the house is completely gone, and she realizes it's only a house and everything, but she has so many memories of Robin, Emma, and Noah there, he consoles her. Anna claims she was on her way to the lawyers, so he offers to accompany her. 
she tells him she has something far more essential to accomplish and asks him to stay with her while she phones Robin. After hanging up the phone, Robert realizes Robin is concerned about her. Anna begs him not to aggravate the situation. She has no idea how far this will go or who is after her. She must piece together what remains of her life, which includes determining who she can and cannot trust. She takes a glance at Valentine's invitation. On the next episode of General Hospital, Finn believes Alexis heard what he said. Alexis says, loud and clear, Gregory seeks assistance from TJ and his doctor. Willow informs someone that she is here to assist them. Anna tells Dante that she will not allow him take the one thing she has left. Eva inquires as to how everything is going. Carly pays a visit to Drew and wonders how he can just walk away. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.